Hello and welcome to another unboxing video from Blueprint Review. So um, we've done one of these before and uh, <laughs> it was hardly a uh, YouTube viral sensation, but uh, another situation has come in which I thought an unboxing video would be appropriate. Uh, so Indicator, we've, we've been reviewing Indicator titles since the label got started. A big fan of the label. They put out some fantastic releases. They, in my mind, they specialize really in, in releasing some more unusual titles that wouldn't normally kind of get the uh, boutique treatment. They especially explore a lot of the more unusual side of British cinema uh, on some of the forgotten side of British cinema. Their latest release, however, even by their kind of unusual standards, is really out of left field. So the box set is called Magic, Myth and Mutilation. The Micro-Budget Cinema of Michael J. Murphy, 1967 to 2015. And uh, maybe it's just me totally out of the loop, but I, I've never heard of Michael J. Murphy at all. And I imagine a lot of people are in the same boat. So it's it seems a surprise that this massive box set with a whopping 26 films in it is has kind of been released at all. But I must admit, even though I've never heard of Michael J. Murphy, I jumped and pre-ordered it straight away. Why, you might ask? Well, I think, for one, as I say, I have a lot of faith in, in uh, Indicator. And they've released a lot of interesting stuff that I've never heard of. But when I've given it a shot, I've been really impressed by something like uh, The Reckoning comes to mind. I had no idea about that. It looked kind of interesting, so I requested a review copy. And it's a fantastic film that really doesn't get enough press. And also, kind of linked to that, I, I, I'm generally interested in discovering something new. If, if, if a Blu-ray of a film comes out that I've never heard of, I mean, some people might be like, oh, I don't care. They just kind of want to get their favourite films on Blu-ray. That's fine. But for me, I love that discovery. So if something comes out that I've not heard of, I'm almost more interested than if, say, they're releasing one of my all-time favourites again for the sixth time on Blu-ray. Also, the micro-budget uh, label on this appealed to me too. I mean, obviously micro-budget films are kind of known for being a little bit lower quality in the broader sense of the term. But I don't know, I, I, I really appreciate the passion and the craft that goes into these low-budget films. So um, I do find myself interested in them. And also, again, kind of linked to this, I think what appeals to me with box sets like this, especially when you've got a boutique label uh, as good as Indicator, releasing it is is the fact that they lavish these with extra features and really when it comes to micro budget filmmaking and low budget filmmaking I quite often <laughs> I'm quite often just happy to work my way through the special features almost as much as the films even the film if the films aren't great it's fascinating to hear how they were made on whatever they could lay their hands on like a wing and a prayer and that's the, the exact reason why straight away I was jumping on and pre-ordering the magic myth and mutilation set it very much appeals to me. The reason I'm doing an unboxing video, though, is that, well, as I mentioned, this is a massive box set. This is 26 films. And it, it's just simply put, it's it's too much for me to get through to, to do a full written review. I don't have the time. But because I was so impressed by the look of this set and because I like to champion some of the kind of weird and wonderful sides of b boutique Blu-ray releases, then I really wanted to cover it. So the only way I could think of was to do an unboxing video. So here we are. Let's uh, dig in. Okay, so as usual for a lot of the indicator sets, you get this um, this little sleeve around it that's got the details of, of what the film is, but you can, you can obviously take that off if, if, if you so desire. And yep, limited edition, you've got your number on there, so you know which one you've got. Um, it's a solid, sturdy box, as you often get with the indicator releases. Um, yeah, it's not one of these kind of flimsy kind of cardboard jobs that's going to fall to bits in minutes. Yeah, you've got all your details of all the films in there. As you can see, a lot of details to give because there's a lot of films in there. I don't know if you can make out all the details. You probably don't need to <laughs> read that much into it. All right, let's get this off. Right, although that comes off easily, I must admit, I've already opened this and had a look last night. So yeah, here's the cover. And so you can see all the titles on there. They've split the discs up on the, on the spine um, because there's two discs in each box. They've each got uh, individual uh, numbers on here, as you can see. So you get two numbers per box. And it lists all the titles in there, which is handy. 
And yeah, there's your list of special features and all the titles. Yeah, see, 34 hours, so a lot to get through, which is why I'm doing this video instead of working my way through every title. Right, I must admit, last night I struggled to get these out. It's a bit of a squeeze in there. You've got to kind of jiggle it around. Here we go. <laughs> yep, and then they slide out easily enough once you've loosened them. So, right. Let's take a look at the booklet first. So, yeah, a creepy, creepy picture on there. With a <laughs> creepy... And there's Michael J. Murphy himself with his uh, little camera. Mm, nice. <laughs> So content, so here we go. So yeah, we've got several essays. Balsa Wood Bob Babylon, The Teenage Tinseltown Dreams of One Michael J. Murphy by Wayne um, Magging. Pride and Prestige. Um, Michael Prestige. Michael J. Murphy's Rights, Returns and Roads to Somewhere by Daryl Buxton. Cheap and Nasty, Michael J. Murphy's Bloodstream by Johnny Walker. The Lost Word of World of Merlin and the Search for an Outsider Auto Filmmaker by Paul Hickson. And then the films of Michael J. Murphy by Wayne Magging. Right, let's have a little leaf through. So yeah, you get some nice uh, behind the scenes stills, and there's some yeah pictures from the uh, pictures from some of the films in here. Nicely labelled, so you know what it's talking about. Yeah, and uh, I must admit I'm a huge fan of the indicated booklets. Um, they tend to get some uh, fantastic essays in there, as well as your nice kind of. Uh, publicity stills and behind the scenes stills and things like that. I always quite like looking at those. But yeah, in terms of a range and quality of uh, essays and uh, extras in the booklets, I do think Indicator are the top notch, really. And th this is quite useful for this box. At the end, you have a full kind of filmography of Michael J. Murphy and details of all his films, including ones that are actually in this set. There's uh, ones that you've just got that maybe have just that are totally lost, and also some where you've just got like three minutes worth it here in the extras. Yeah, and you've got details of all of them. So, yeah, it's a good, good read there. And as usual, yes, but thanks, acknowledgements, and the details of the transfer. I think on the page before. So, yeah, excellent, decent, solid booklet. So let's have a look at the discs. Right, so you've got Tristan and Isolt, Happy Ever After, Secrets, Almost a Movie, The Cell, Stay, Death in the Family, Invitation to Hell, and The Last Night. So this is the first disc. The discs are all in chronological order. So you can see it's at the top corner. It says Cinema of 1967 to 1982. So um, each kind of box is um, a different uh, section of his Michael J. Murphy's career. Yeah, and this is how they're laid out inside. So they're both on one side of the case kind of elevated so they're not um, touching each other. It's easy to get on and off, which is nice. Sometimes it can be a pain. Okay, the next disc. So, Quailin, I don't know how to pronounce that, or the hereafter. Bloodstream, Tristan, The Legend of a Hero, and Death Run. So yeah, that's this is the 1983 to 1987 titles. So you get all your extra details, your film details, all that kind of stuff. Okay, this one we've got Avalon, Moonchild, Torment, and Atlantis. Some more <laughs> gruesome imagery on the front. Yeah, that's from 1988 to 1991. Yeah, all your details and stuff again. And we have Second Sight, Road to Nowhere, The Rite of Spring, and Tristan. So <laughs> the imagery is getting more and more unusual. Yeah, and so yeah, that's 91 to 99. Say so you'd been making films for a long time. Okay, Roxy, Scare, ZK3, Necross Isle of the Dead, and The Return of Alan Strange. This is the last disc. And once again, I think the images get weirder and weirder. It's, uh, it's uh, tantalizing, is the word. So 2004, 2015. So it really covers a long, kind of large, a, a, long, amount, a long amount of time, really. And... Um, the entirety of his career, other than maybe some early ones when he was a teenager. Yeah, I, I pre-ordered the set. Uh, anyone who pre-orders it gets these uh, little kind of postcards, uh, if we can get them open. There we go. So yeah, Tristan and I Salt. So that's, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. That's the earliest film on the disc set. 
Avalon. It's a cool little image on there. Moonchild. Torment. Invitation to Hell. See, that's got the creepy guy in the, from the front of the box. And another Invitation to Hell in the last night. So, yeah, some groovy little postcards. Yeah, so there we go. A fantastic looking set. I can't wait to get dig into it. Now, I actually have watched one of the films in the set. I wanted to watch something. And I was going to start at the beginning and watch Tristan and Isolt, if that's it, again. God knows if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and I did start to watch that, but um, there was a kind of a caption at the beginning explaining the issues they had with the video. So the earlier films were kind of shot on 8mm and 16mm. But unfortunately, some of the footage was lost and quite a lot of the audio was lost. So the Indicator team have really done all they can to try and restore what they can. Like some of the footage has been restored from, um, I think it's Michael J. Murphy himself using a video camera to record a projection of the 8mm, 16mm film. And so some of those have been put in to replace missing sections. There's also some sections when it kind of goes silent. Uh, but the disclaimer at the beginning of Tristan Isolt kind of explained how because there's so much missing and because of the limitations of what was available, they recommended to watch the later Tristan films first before watching this. So I decided to do that. I thought, I'm not going to jump in there if I'm just going to watch one film before doing this video. I didn't want to jump in there on one that's kind of... Um, compromised that heavily really so I chose to watch the second film and it did turn out I mean that was compromised too there's there's, there's a lot of missing audio it wasn't clear because um, it also on, on some of the disclaimers it kind of says how they've used title cards sometimes to explain what's going on there, there weren't any title cards in there so I don't know if there's actually anything missing from the film but it was quite short I mean it's um, I think about 48 minutes and you do have missing dialogue um, there's still music over there so there was still stuff missing and as such I mean I did find it wasn't a film that I loved, to be honest. I think um, I didn't always quite know what was going on, to be perfectly honest. But I, I do put this down to the fact that some of the um, material is missing. I'm going to use that excuse here. But at the same time, I could definitely see a lot of potential. Obviously, this is an early film from Murphy. Um, but I could def definitely see a lot of potential for a kind of micro-budget film, kind of, made for nothing it's surprisingly good quality there's some nice photography in there uh, there's great use of a kind of a greek location and um, looking up at the set it sounds like him murphy shot a lot of films in greece for a micro budget film the performance is not that bad i mean the lead actress is a bit over the top and and kind of the the other couple of guys who are in it and maybe un under a bit underplay things so, the, the, yeah, you're not going to give them Oscars, but at the same time, compared to a lot of micro-budget cinema, which is the performances can really suffer, whereas these, they're, they're, not, they're not that bad. So it's, it's a perfectly, it sounds like a faint praise, but it's a perfectly watchable film, as I say, with a lot of potential and some nice photography. I think it was just, as I say, I couldn't quite follow what was going on, and I think this is largely because bits are missing. So although it wasn't, it wasn't a mind-blowing film, it did kind of set me up to think that actually I'm, I should be in for... Uh, better times through the rest of the set if, if this is kind of the standard of his one of his earlier films that's missing lots of footage then I'm hoping that means some of these later ones are going to be easier to watch and a lot more effective so yeah I'm, I'm st still thrilled with this set and although I haven't watched many of the films I've only watched one of the film out of the 26 um, I'll definitely recommend it to people I think it looks like a fascinating set I think it's like huge ad admirable for Indicator to spend so much time and effort over this this release and I, I hope they have more to come because as I say I love digging out these undiscovered gems and even if even if the films aren't great I love to listen to their story and this is something I'm definitely looking forward to in this set there's a especially there's like a three-part documentary about Murphy that's spread over the set and I'm very much looking forward to working through that so yeah gets uh, gets a thumbs up from me and as you can see from the unboxing video it's an attractive well put together set so thank you for watching and keep visiting blueprintreview.co.uk and keep an eye out. There might be some more unboxing videos in the future. I haven't got any on the horizon, but um, I'm sure a situation like this will come up again sometime. So thanks for watching.